Hi guys, it's Dr. Elowad from stepandrun.com and today we'll be continuing our section on immunology and for this lecture we'll be talking about um, the origin of our immune cells which is a continuation of hematopoiesis uh, which you can see in the previous video where we talked about the location of where hematopoiesis goes on so in this one we'll talk about how all these different types of cells originate all our immune cells where do they come from and how do they differentiate from the hematopoietic stem cell okay so without wasting any more time let's get straight into it so when we talk about our immune cells we're primarily referring to what we call leukocytes which are our white blood, blood cells and the word leukocytes what it really means is its uh, Latin origin Leuco meaning white and site meaning cell and its main function as you probably already know by now is defense against infections now the normal count in blood is between 4,000 to 10,000 cells per millimeter cubed so if you have um, any figures in your FBC's looking different and out of this range then you're suspecting that something is going on whether it's increased numbers in infection or decreased uh, numbers in uh, immunodeficiencies you'll just have some rough idea that there's something going on and our leukocytes can be broadly divided into two categories that is your granulocytes which are your basophils, eosinophils and neutrophils and your agranulocytes which are your monocytes and your lymphocytes now bear in mind um, all granulocytes or agranulocyte means is that you either see granules or you don't see granules in the cytoplasm under right stain. Now if you don't know what right stain is, it's a histological stain that's used to differentiate uh, white blood cells. Now it's commonly used um, when you want to do a differential of your white blood cells. Basically they use the stain and it just uh, makes all the cells look nice and different so you can identify which type of cell you're looking at under the microscope. Now, when we're talking about blood cell or white blood cell differentiation, our most common type of white blood cell is our neutrophils, which come in at 54 to 62%, and that's followed by lymphocytes. Now, what can usually happen is, um, depending on which type of blood cells are higher or increased in the case of infection, it allows you to narrow down what type of infection you have. So what I mean by this is, if your neutrophil count is increased then there's a chance that there's a bacterial infection is going on and vice versa if your lymphocyte count is increased then you are likely to have a viral infection of some sort and we can continue to say this when we talk even about monocytes eosinophils and basophils when we start to look closely at which function each type of cell has and when we understand what function each type of cell has then we can understand in which um, types of uh, disease states are they going to be increased so when we see increased numbers in one of these cells because we understand their function we can have some rough idea of what is going on and at the bottom here we have a nice little mnemonic to help us remember um, which you know blood cells are most common so neutrophils like making everything better and of course neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils and basophils in order of most common to least common in the blood and then you can see the decreasing figures on the right. Now when we talk about the origin of our, our white blood side cells as we recall um, the hematopoietic stem cells which are these or HSCs which from the last lecture we learned that they're present after birth in the bone marrow, in the red bone marrow, which is the active site of hematopoiesis. And as we remember, this is a multipotent stem cell, hematopoietic stem cell. It's a multipotent stem cell. All blood cell types are derived from it. So one cell that's producing multiple types of different cells, your hematopoietic stem cell, is going on to differentiate to produce not only your red blood cells, your platelets, mast cells and basophils, but it can also differentiate to produce your B lymphocytes and your T lymphocytes. 
And this is what we mean by multipotent when we say that the hematopoietic stem cell is multipotent. So when we look at this hematopoietic stem cell, we can say that it can differentiate into one of two different lineages. It can either differentiate into the myeloid progenitors or your myeloid stem cells under the influence of GMCSF, which is your granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor and into leukin 3 so if you have these two cytokines present hematopoietic stem cell will go on to differentiate into your myeloid progenitor and we'll have a look at what comes about from these myeloid progenitors or your hematopoietic stem cell under the presence of interleukin 7 can go on to give you a lymphoid progenitor which is going to produce your B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes and natural killer cells. And the easy way to remember this is our interleukin 7, 7 looks like an upside down L. So hematopoietic stem cell in the presence of interleukin 7, lymphoid progenitor. And hematopoietic stem cell under the presence of GMCSF, interleukin 3, you get your myeloid progenitor. So looking at our myeloid progenitor we can see that this myeloid progenitor can go on to continue and differentiate down a series of different lines to give us different end cells now when this myeloid progenitor is under the influence of lots of GMCSF it will predominantly go towards our granulocyte monocyte progenitor we'll have a look at what this further differentiates because once it goes into the granulite granulocyte monocyte progenitor it still continues to differentiate to give us lots of other cells and we'll have a look at that in a second myeloid progenitor under the influence of interleukin 5 which is important will give us our eosinophil progenitor interleukin 5 will give us our eosinophil so when we have high um, amount of interleukin 5 say if we have a parasitic infection what will happen is that the hematopoietic stem cell and then the myeloid progenitor will come under the influence of lots of interleukin-5 which will tell the body that we need more eosinophils to fight the parasitic infection hence more eosinophils are going to be pumped out into the blood and we'll see this when we're looking at our white blood cell differential when we have a parasitic infection we'll see that the eosinophil count will be increased okay and then we'll see that the myeloid progenitor can also differentiate into our basophil progenitor which will give us our basophils and our mast cells now the thing about mast cells is they're not a hundred percent certain where exactly the mast cells come from precisely but um, I put it here with the basophils because I found a lot of sources that had it with the basophils and the thing is you have to remember that these basophils and mast cells are very similar in function they're both granulated cells and they both release heparin when IgE binds to them they both degranulate and release histamine but they're still considered different cells even though they share similar stru structure and function and another thing to remember is that the basophil leaves the bone marrow already mature and it circulates in the blood as a mature cell whereas the mast cell circulates in the blood as an immature cell and it only maturates once it reaches its destination site its tissue site where it's going to remain now we'll talk a, a little bit more about this in the video where we'll talk about mast cells and basophils more in depth and we'll have a look at where you'll find the mast cells and what conditions um, these two cells degranulate in and then the next thing that we have from our myeloid progenitor is we have the megakaryocyte which when there's thrombopoietin we get the megakaryocyte and then under the influence of interleukin 11 and thrombopoietin we get our platelets and we'll also go into more detail when we talk specifically about platelets when we're talking um, later on in hemato, uh, hematology we'll have a closer look at these cells and then we'll have a look at our RBCs which come from your erythroid progenitor under the influence of erythropoietin 
But for now, we'll just focus on the immune cells, the white blood cells. So we'll have a closer look at those um, in the next coming videos. But for now, we'll go back, have a look at our granulocyte monocyte progenitor. We'll pick off. We'll pick up where we left off on this one, and you'll see in the next slide. That so you'll see that our granulocyte monocyte progenitor has the ability to differentiate into a monocyte. Now the monocyte circulates in the blood and then when this monocyte goes into the tissue it further differentiates into a macrophage. Now this monocyte also has the ability to become a dendritic cell under the influence of GMCSF and into leukin 4. Okay, And this granulocyte monocyte progenitor also has the ability to differentiate into neutrophils which remember are most common white blood cell that we find in the blood around 60 percent is going to be neutrophils so we've had a look so far at our myeloid progenitor which type of cells it produces let's have a look at our lymphoid progenitor which remember under the influence of interleukin 7 you get your lymphoid progenitor so our lymphoid progenitor is different from our myeloid progenitor in that our myeloid progenitor produces cells of the innate immune system and our lymphoid progenitor produces cells of our adaptive immune system. Okay, So our lymphoid progenitor can differentiate into our T progenitor which will differentiate into a naive T cell and as it becomes a naive T cell it expresses CD3. Now remember all cells express CD3. All T cells express CD3 which is one of the differentiating markers that can allow us to know if it's a CD3 cell. So when a naive T cell, i.e. a T cell that hasn't been exposed to antigen, it will expose, it will um, have a CD3 marker. It then goes to the thymus where it undergoes a rigorous um, process to help it differentiate further into either a helper T cell which will express CD4 and a cytotoxic T cell which will express CD8. Now if you get confused about which is the helper and which is the cytotoxic the way I remember it is that basically um, the little four-year-old is your helper and the eight-year-old is your killer. That's just the way I like to remember it. And then uh, going back to our lymphoid progenitor, we'll see that it also has the ability to differentiate into a B progenitor and then further differentiating into our B lymphocyte. Now B lymphocyte um, in the tissue, uh, it can further differentiate into plasma cell and plasma cell will produce our antibodies. And we'll talk about that further on when we talk about B B cells and T cells and we'll have a, we'll have a closer look at their different functions because they're a bit more complicated than our innate cells and the thing to remember is that your B lymphocytes express CD19, 20 and 21. Now bear in mind that from the lymphoid progenitor you can also get your natural killer cell which is a large granular lymphocyte but it's not part of the adaptive system it's part of the innate system although it is from the lymphoid progenitor so remember this that the lymphoid progenitor produces our natural killer cell which is part of our innate immune system okay and this expresses CD16 and CD56 cell surface markers but we'll also be looking at this cell in further depth so in the next video we'll be having a look at all of our different white blood cells we'll be having a look at their function and uh, where you find them, their tissue distribution um, and all the interesting facts about them so that we can ha we can properly understand the immune responses and if you have uh, any additions or any comments that you'd like to make feel free to post below and make sure you uh, subscribe thanks guys I'll see you in the next video